Kultur. Das Kulturmagazin auf Mortica FM. Kultur. 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 Einen schönen guten Tag und willkommen zu einer weiteren Ausgabe von Tja, Kultur oder Kontrapunkt, das ist nicht ganz sicher. Wir nehmen einfach mal Kultur. Es könnte auch eine Kontroverse werden. Das werden wir im Laufe der Sendung sehen. Am Mikrofon begrüßt Sie bzw. Euch Eike Gebhardt für Radio Multikult FM aus der Heinecke Markthalle in Kreuzberg. Das Thema der Women's Peace March in Berlin, der Freitag, den 16. am Alexanderplatz und Brandenburger Tor stattfinden wird. Die Details werden wir am Schluss noch einmal ansagen. Auf Initiative der preisgekrönten Singer, Songwriterin und Friedensaktivistin Jal Deckelbaum und ihrer Bewegung Women Wage Peace marschierten Ende letzten Jahres 30.000 Frauen unterschiedlichster Religionen und Herkunft aus dem Norden Israels nach Jerusalem. Mit der Forderung nach Frieden legten Tausende von Menschen den Weg singend zurück und machten mit der Hymne Prayer of the Mothers den Marsch zum weltweiten Symbol für Versöhnung und Menschlichkeit. Zeitgleich haben sich zahlreiche Women's Marches überall auf der Welt formiert, zum Beispiel in New York, London, Stockholm, Jerusalem, Sydney, Zürich und eben jetzt auch in Berlin. Die Veranstaltungsreihe Puls des Friedens wurde durch den Verein Clans des Friedens e.V. ins Leben gerufen. Sie verstehen sich als Teil dieser globalen Bewegung und organisieren den Women's Peace March in Berlin, wie gesagt, am 16. um 17 Uhr. Die Details sagen wir nachher nochmal an. Am 16. will also um 17 Uhr der March vom Alexanderplatz, vom Neptunbrunnen, singen zum Brandenburger Tor ziehen. Warum singen? Das werden wir nachher noch diskutieren. Das ist offensichtlich ein Teil des Programms, das Singen als eine Art Droge, als ein Rausch begriffen wird, der die Menschen zusammenbringt. Die Kundgebung wird von weiteren internationalen Gästen begleitet, unter anderem von den Gewinnern des Karnevals der Kulturen, 2017 Laka Laka, sie unterstützen den Auftritt mit ihrer Performance, ebenso wie Moetu Taiha, eine Maori-Älteste, oder Bernd Kolb, der gerade seine Brahman-Ausstellung in der Malzfabrik eröffnet hat. Gemeinsam möchten sie alle auch hier in Berlin ein Zeichen für den globalen menschlichen Schulterschluss setzen. Was für eine schöne Metapher. Frauen und Mütter stehen weltweit auf für ein friedliches Gleichgewicht auf unserer Erde. Frieden, heißt es, ist eine Sinfonie, die sich aus den unterschiedlichsten Klängen von Gemeinschaft, Freiheit, Menschenrechten, Kreativität, Bildung und Gleichgewicht zusammensetzt. So das Manifest. Ich darf nun die Gäste begrüßen. Jarl Deckelbaum, die Singer-Songwriterin-Legende persönlich. Sie können viele Videos auf YouTube oder im Netz ganz generell abrufen. Miriam Tukan, sie ist Palästinenserin, Araberin, lebt allerdings in Israel am Galiläischen Meer. Die beiden treten oft zusammen auf, vor allem im Kontext des Women's March for Peace und des berühmten Songs Mother's Prayers for Peace. Ja, Deckerbaum ist eine Kanadierin, Israelin und Miriam Tukan kommt aus Palästina. Dazu die Organisatoren des ganzen Events, als Pulse for Freedom, Pulse of Freedom oder Puls des Friedens, Anja Kaul und die Initiatoren des Clans des Friedens, Margaret Hoffmann. Am Mikrofon noch einmal Eike Geppert. So, meine lieben Zuhörer, Zuhörerinnen, das muss man ja heute getrennt alles sagen, da einige von unseren Gästen kein Deutsch sprechen, was verzeihlich ist, werden wir diese Sendung, wie schon so oft zuvor, auf Englisch führen. Das heißt, die Diskussion, Sie können natürlich gerne später sich melden. Wir werden Ihnen gerne eine deutsche Zusammenfassung liefern. Und es ist natürlich nachzuhören auf unserer Website. Nichtsdestoweniger, die Diskussion jetzt mit den Gästen findet statt auf Englisch. All right, let's start with the initiators of the whole movement. Why women? We men feel terribly discriminated. Why did you select only women for the peace march? Do you think women are predestined for peace? Margaret Mitchell, a famous psychoanalyst in Germany, wrote Friedfertige Frau, 
as if there was a natural affinity of women to peace and for men to being belligerent to the initiators. Why Women's Peace March? I mean, we as men typically feel discriminated. I mean, you women have had that for thousands of years, obviously, that you were discriminated against. Why are women, in your eyes, predestined for peace as opposed to men? Why Women's Peace March? Is it a strategic question? that you think it's more persuasive, a women march, women singing, after all, quite an event? Or is there a kind of tacit principle why you only select women for that kind of march, for that kind of program? Well, uh, for a start, it's not that we only select women, because uh, men are very welcome and needed to join. But it's more that uh, I think we women uh, came to a point where we have enough of uh, the old structure, and so we uh, gather our sisters uh, and and we uh, march together. And I think we women, well, especially the mothers, um, they they have the ability to really give life, to materialize life, and it's very hard to, to see your child die or to see the child of your uh, sister or neighbor die. And I think uh, also we women uh, suffer the most, s women and children, of all the war going on. And so, of course, for me it makes uh, perfect sense uh, that the women come together, unify and say, okay, no, no, we, we um, live a different life right now and we live a peaceful life right now. But like I said, m we women may um, lead or initiate this new peace movement but uh, you're welcome to join every man is Thank welcome you. to join of course now of course as you probably know there are many women that will contradict you for instance a famous feminist german feminist barbara sichtermann said hey women were always behind the men you know with their adoration of belligerence of heroic men of strong competitive men right all that these are the kind of men and every man knows painfully you know when he's in a competition at a party or whatever you know and there is one of these heroic figures the women will fly in that direction just like men will direct their views first you know, to women that are more attractive. It's just one of these things. So, is it possible that Times they... are changing. Yes. Just, just to say that. This, Fortunately, but... Uh, this is how it used to be, and I'm not saying that it's wrong, uh, or that, that uh, it's, it's... It's just times are changing. There's a shift. This is how the world used to be in the patriarchal times. And you mean in the present? The present is the shift. The past is patriarchal. The future is balance. And we have not been, we have not balanced yet. And it needs to be balanced. It's not about, everybody is a part of how the system used to work. Everybody has a responsibility. The women have a responsibility for playing along with the old system. The men have a responsibility for leading the old system. The women also have a responsibility for letting it be as it was. And it's not about blaming the past. It's about changing it into something better and, and growing. That's exactly what we want to know, obviously. How do you go about changing it? I mean, one thing is changing the circumstances, for instance, new laws, you know, that give more rights to women. After all, you know, like 50 years ago, women couldn't have in Germany and many other countries a bank account of their own. They couldn't take a job, you know, without the permission, the husbands, you know, and so on and so on. All these things have changed. This is changing the circumstances and the conditions of living. That's one thing. The other is changing the frame of mind both of the women and the men. Yes. How do you go about that? It's a, it's a deep work. Yes. It's very deep. A long process. And uh, that we are painfully aware of. But how do you go about it strategically? Um, we go by it intuit intuitively, first of all. Uh, it strategically is also a different way. There is it's a, a male word you want it's, to tell. It's it's not a male word. It's it's just not relevant to this new movement, which is uh, it's global. It's happening all over the world. Uh, we have women waking up everywhere. Um, 
uh, and and it's they have a special connection between the women and a language that we all understand and everywhere we go Miriam and I we travel we've been to Spain we've been to Zurich I've been to Washington uh, we, we did it with the Palestinian women with with the Israeli women uh, we are we are here now in Germany we are going to go to Brazil everywhere we go and I'm telling you from experience from through my eyes my experience is that we have a common language that we all understand we look into each other's eyes and we know and it's not something that I can say it's a strategy this is it's it's above strategy it's this is a strategy but it's in for us, it's by spiritual things and not things that we are making like low or uh, I'm a lawyer, but I find that spiritually is more powerful. And we are as musicians, we are making this for a long time, but we give this the right expressions and uh, we, we try to spread this energy, this light, this uh, spiritual words and music. Uh, and we get it back from people. We see how people uh, change or how it influence. So this is our way now, and it's now very powerful. That's very powerful and impressive. The video testifies to that. But still, to play devil's advocate for a moment, if you want to convince a woman in Africa or in Latin America that it's better for her not to have a strong, dominant man um, you know, well, actually, it's, it's a, I have to say something about that because the, what ignited prayer of the mothers started in Africa, in Liberia. Uh -huh. So it's I don't have to convince the African women; they convinced me. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. And 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 also we don't have to convince anybody. We don't even want that. And um, how I see it, it the time of change is already here and it's only that uh, uh, mainly the women just coming together and, and living the change, the change is already here and uh, if, if you want to feel it, you can feel it everywhere and convincing strategy for me that it's like it's the old system I'm not really interested in and really more going um, well you said intuition but it's mm -hmm. also like um, I ask myself uh, sometimes, or I ask you, what do you think? Where all your ideas come from? And suddenly it's like, oh, you you have this great uh, idea, like a light, and it shines on your path, and you exactly know what to do and uh, to do it now. And this is how the pulse of peace or the prayer of mothers develop, and nobody can stop it because it's a it's a worldwide movement. And it's not a movement what was planned and um, to see oh, how we can do it, how we can convince people. It's happening with all the people all over the world at the same time. Because I think um, we, we receive something and we know it. Yeah, that's, that's the truth. We are living our truth now. And the truth, one part of the truth of humanity is peace. And that's now, that's all. No. That may be true, and I hope you're quite right, but how do you convince the majority of the population? Take me as a simple example. I confessed to a terrible ignorance of the entire movement, Pulse for Peace, Peace March or whatever. I didn't know about it. This is the first time I meet Jarl Deckelbaum, the first time I meet you people. I think I'm fairly representative. Now let's uh, take another question. We're here in the middle of Berlin. There are millions, not millions, but tens of thousands of refugees here, many of them coming from cultures where the role of women is not exactly, you know, or let's say women aren't exactly who is listened to primarily. How do you uh, convey that to, you know, a classic uh, migrant family, let's say with Islamic background, that the role of women is supposed to be much more potent, much more powerful, and has a say in the first place in the way the family or, worst of all, politics is supposed to be conducted? I think we have to take it step by step and um, don't miss the children in it and uh, educate them maybe in a different way, lead them with, uh, with different pictures, with different women pictures uh, that we give them. And um, um, Have you had any success with that? Let me ask you straightforward like that. 
Yes, I think so. I'm working the last three years in schools in Berlin, and I do think so that the the kids are growing, and that are growing that are growing into a, a community and. Um, kids' minds can still be shaped. You mean, later on, maybe it's too. Yes, but but uh, there are also rigid. a lot of parents that are thankful for it. You know, I mean, it always it's it's always the point where you shift your focus on. You know, <laughs> and I think we have to start uh, shifting our focus on the positive things and on the positive sides of uh, migration, emigration, um, step by step. And also, mm -hmm. I think it's a really, um, let's say, old picture of that uh, women in Islamic families uh, are suffering. And, and of course, I know what you're talking about. I'm but, not saying but, suffering so much because as much as you identify with your role, you don't necessarily suffer because it's part of their self-image. Well, but is, they don't have an equal say, possibly, in conducting affairs. That's true. Conducting that's very affairs. true. That's very true. But uh, I like to add that I think women in uh, Islamic countries are very strong. Our sisters are very strong. And um, so, um, for me, the picture uh, you were talking about doesn't really fit. Mm -hmm. And... I don't think I have to convince any Islamic sister. She's exactly knowing or Christian what, what, sister or Christian for that or Jewish or whatever. And, and it's not about no. religion anyway. For me, not at all. It's about what unites us as human beings. That is uh, our deepest wish in our heart. And we all have a heart. And I think all men, women, children, green, black, red, whatever, have the wish for peace harmony, balance, and, and to live in community. And, and I think that uh, it's where we all come from. If we all have that wish, why hasn't it happened yet? So there will be a, a, a story. Selfish exactly. Yes. <laughs> Now, obviously, you're the catalysts of that movement. You made it come true. Hopefully, it'll be self-fulfilling prophecy, you know, the classic definition. I think it's the big surprise that's not written in the prophecies. That and the I, women will be the liberators <laughs> of, of humankind. And that's why you have to add to the prophecy. And a self-fulfilling prophecy is an old method saying if people believe that a situation is real, they will act as if it was real. You know, if you have a myth that that's a bank it. is going bankrupt, everybody withdraws their money, then you make the bank yes. go bankrupt. It's how you create reality. It's how Donald exactly. Trump became president of the United States. That the same your, way. You have that beautiful word <laughs> in your interview that you say you try to be contagious. What sounds like a disease is obviously a beautiful way of contagion. Who wouldn't like to be affected or infected by that kind of event? You brought your guitar along, and maybe a two of you could give us an example of how you proceed, as Miriam was saying, spiritually in that sense, as you are saying, by contagion. We are looking forward to hearing what you have to say and how you obviously have already affected millions of people because I saw on the internet that you had three and a half million clicks already for that song. On, on YouTube and another three million on Facebook. So. We are impressed and I Thank hope you. it's going to be, as the Bible says, it's fruitful and will multiply. Thank you. So before we sing this song, uh, you were talking about convincing. And uh, I think that Miriam and I were not here to convince anyone of anything. But you can't help it. Our job is to inspire. But by inspiring, and you convince people maybe to change yes, their mind but and their attitude. We hope. But it's not Inshallah. our goal. Our goal is to inspire. Yeah. Our goal, and I think when you are in a positive movement, it's about finding your own peace of mind, your own path, connecting to good people, and not trying to force your opinion on anyone else, but just by being the best that you can be and finding more people who, who you can connect to and you become a magnet to more and more people like this and this becomes an inspiration and this is where i believe that music has a very important role in the change i was nasty calling it a drug but it has a kind of delirious and intoxicating effect obviously your songs when you see them on video because people people feel the truth in it and they um discover their own truth mm -hmm. 
and so they are able to uh, live their own truths and I think that's that they suppressed it. what they actually knew but they yeah. didn't want to know yeah and they, and they couldn't feel it anymore and now yeah, okay. they start to feel it and and so that's why this global movement is happening so fast yes very fast yeah very fast <laughs> all right here are Miriam and Yael <laughs>
that we'd be privileged to a live concert in our small studio here at Radio Multicult FM. Thank you so much. We'll hear more that we'll play later on from CDs. But right now, because you are a multicultural movement, let me ask you, a, not provocative, but of course, you know, obviously a question that's close to everybody's heart. Is there any potential conflict between interest groups that your movement, which is extensive, large, comprehensive, any kind of conflicts of interest that you have noted between ethnic groups, nationalities, uh, even between the sexes. Anything that you've noticed, because I can imagine it doesn't go without conflict. No social movement has ever moved forward without conflict. There's always a conflict. It's natural that uh, we disagree. I think the focus should be on how we are managing, managing to... Yes. It's the real uh, reality in Israel-Palestine. It's 24-7 uh, all the time. We breathe it, we live it, these conflicts, and uh, we are trying to make it a better place to have this uh, multicultural and pluralism and, and to make it a paradise and uh, to, well, to use this... We're all on your side and, you know, who doesn't long for paradise? But what I meant is, have you experienced it it's within the movement? Even Miriam and, and so, I what are the Even Miriam and I personally. Give us an example. Have, Quarrel. Think you're married. We're having you it in the country. It's uh, differences. And, he wants uh, a drama. Drama. He's looking for the drama. drama. <laughs> looking for uh, the drama. You don't have to perform the drama, right. but just <laughs> mention what are the typical topics on which you would quarrel. Like, uh, if, from my experience, when I'm in concerts for children in schools, Arab schools or Jewish schools, sometimes I always sing in both languages, and sometimes the children doesn't want to hear Arabic, and uh, or the, the kid doesn't want to uh, sing in uh, the other language of mm -hmm. the other, because... Uh, he was raised in a house that he, they tell him it's your enemy. It's the language of your your enemy. So the, all the, the time we have these um, little uh, experiences and uh, sometimes fears when something happened in the specific day uh, in Jerusalem, in uh, Tel Aviv, uh, a terror attack from both of sides. I don't mention which side. So sometimes we fear to go to stage. We have this... Uh, uh, tension in the air, tension, of course. Yeah. Impacts, uh, it impacts us and our strength, our energy, our songs that we choose this day in our repertoire, our uh, speech. Uh, it's all the time living this thing. But and is the inspiration mission. of the music really enough? I remember a movie, I forgot the name of the Israeli dance company. There's a dance company that was teaching, you know, conventional dance, couples dance, European conventional dance. And of course, it was also both for Palestinians and Israelis. And I forgot, unfortunately, the name, but it's a famous movie, you know, an Israeli dance company. Mm -hmm. And the young Palestinian boys, of course, couldn't make up their mind to shake the hands, you know, of the girls. How, and they, with the charm and the movement, and as Yahweh would say, the inspiration of the dance, motion is a kind of intoxication. It's a kind of delirium. You forget yourself for a moment in a positive way. You forget all the prejudices, forget all the conditioning, the mental conditioning that you had before. Does music have the same effect just by singing with them? Daniel Barenboim is doing the same thing here with the you know, East West Ivan Orchestra, as you probably know. They get together that way. That doesn't mean that the moment they are out of the orchestra, they don't start quarreling again. But within the music, do you have the same experience just within performing? Tool. During the time of performing, all the kind of potential latent conflicts are actually assuaged, appeased, don't play a role anymore. 
it's our tool, no? We are making the change. We, we feel the change of the people, their ideology, their point of views. We, we experience this. But no? you said uh, what's most interesting is, and I agree, is the method how you do it. How do you do it? If you have a situation of conflict, how do you go about it concretely with your musical tools? I, I can imagine a, a situation in, in my imagination that... Uh, if uh, there was a big quarrel, uh, even even like, I don't know, it's just a wish that I have, but I can imagine that there will be like a big uh, violence. And if enough people will start to sing, they would stop. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I imagine it. Uh, I imagine art as something that uh, can, um, we are very, con as you said, very conditioned in, in our reality. And in, in our minds are programmed and very uh, automatic. Um, we, we push a button and there's a bomb exploding us inside of us. All you need to do is push our vulnerability. And as I see uh, music and art, it, uh, it, uh, it pushes another button. It's all about emotions. Yes. And, and it's about touching the, this machine that we are and what ignites certain energies inside of this machine. Mm -hmm. And music has the job when someone yeah. will speak very offensive to you and s say bad things and maybe even even uh, to right. threaten yeah. your your safety, then you will become uh, in a certain position. If someone will sing to you, if someone will hug you, if some you have to learn how to dis disarm uh, anger, how to disarm hatred, and you can never ever do it with hatred and with violence. Never you you will never disarm. You will only make the bomb bigger and bigger and bigger That's right. and uh, and one more thing is that I have to tell you is the story of the day in Qasr al Yahud the, the march of the women with women wage peace uh, the first day that the Palestinian women actually came uh, I thought at first that it's going to be uh, very very tense, tense. I, I, I was embarrassed like before before this happened I was physically embarrassed I was wondering how is it going to be a part of me wanted to celebrate and the other part said no this is serious like this you're gonna meet these Palestinian women from the West Bank what's gonna happen and I tell you I couldn't believe with with my eyes what I saw Yes. The women came out of the buses and everybody was hugging, hugging. <laughs> and kissing and dancing in circles and celebrating mm -hmm. the beauty. Yeah. I couldn't believe the freedom that was in the air. This was, I, I was, it caught me by surprise because I thought, well, this situation is serious. This, how can we celebrate this meeting? And, and no, we have to celebrate this meeting. We have to disarm. We have to start believing in each other again. And we, ha and we have to start believing because what is under threat is the lives of our children. Mm -hmm. The lives of our children are under threat. And it's not under threat by... Um, yeah. It's not under threat by by only this side or that side. It's under threat by a certain power that has hold on both sides. And this is what we have to disarm. And mm. this is what the mothers, the women have the power to do, I believe, together with the men who will take part in it. But it, the women have to be to lead a part or at least 50 percent or at least 70 percent of the leadership of this movement. Yes. Well, that's a touchy issue uh, in many respects, I think. But uh, it's fascinating that you think that way. Uh, I'll tell you why I think that way and why only inspiration may not be the only, let's say, be the only approach to it. Uh, 2005 was Einstein year, 200 years, you know, theory of relativity. There were Einstein conferences all over the world. I was curator of the Einstein conference in Tel Aviv. Now, I said I'll only do that if part of the conference takes place in Ramallah too. It didn't sit well with the Israeli partners, but I insisted. And there's the Alliance Française in the Goethe House in Ramallah. You know, that uh, covers these kind of cultural events. Now, there are three areas in which that conflict can be set aside for a minute. That's business, it's the arts, and it's science. Mm -hmm. Right? Scientists can talk to each other, artists can talk to each other, and business people can talk to each other beyond the political conflict, mm -hmm. actually. 
But the moment the scientists stopped discussing issues, they were up in arms again on the barricades. Strangely enough. Now, that's why I said, on the other hand, it was, it's, there is a circle around, you know, of Israeli intellectuals and Palestinian intellectuals that gets together, usually meets in this neutral territory of Hanan Ashravi, for instance, and they discuss the insanities of their respective governments, mm -hmm. right? Now, obviously, it's not only by inspiration, but also by persuasion, rationally, intellectually. You're a lawyer, I gathered. Now, obviously, that must be something that you're predestined to attempt also, persuade people with intelligent rhetoric, with strategic rhetoric. Have you ever tried that side by side with the approach that you're practicing with Yale? Uh, it was a side. My Miriam, as a lawyer, it was in all these things a little bit aside. Uh, as a lawyer, I worked, um, I choose to be in a town, village town in the north, um, that the majority is uh, Islam, and I choose that place because I saw that women are coming to the office just to tell their stories and to. They, are, they were very happy that a woman lawyer is in their town. And has empathy, obviously, with this And situation, I'm yeah. trying all the time to, to take also my law career in the path of uh, giving uh, the help for people, for women, especially for women, and, uh, and not to be very deep connected to the, to the law, to the dry law that I maybe uh, someday wanted to be, but the singer Miriam overcome this <laughs> this situation <laughs> and I find myself more in the singing and making music and uh, it's and just a question of whether you should pursue just one strategy but should open all channels maybe that may persuade I use people this. right I use this but it's it's something that I use not uh, all the time as the, the Miriam the lawyer but I I have this in my personality in my mind I learned for years in a very good place in the Haifa University and I opened my mind to to the law and it's very important but I use it differently I'm not sitting all the day in the office and making uh, the the job right. and it's something different now the question why I asked that question is you mentioned in your interview, if I remember correctly, Yael, that you're talking particularly or you're addressing particularly musicians. And no, I have, to, I have to set things a little bit straight, straight yeah. because I'm a musician. <laughs> this is what I do. I'm not, and Miriam is also a lawyer and a musician, which is amazing. Uh, Women Wage Peace is a very large movement. And it's not doesn't have only musicians. It has women who are judges, women who are lawyers, women who are businesswomen. Well, yeah, uh, assume, yeah. Practical, very practical. If you have that very, many, it's a very, obviously. very, very practical, very down to earth movement. I'm just this for me. My job, I see it as as the wind in the sails. Or what I do with the music is I, is to lead people to believe. I think that hope, you can't make change without hope, but you can also not make change with only hope. You have to be practical. You yeah, have to bring course. things down to earth and this. You have different people to do these jobs. That brings me to our next question. I'm glad you triggered the issue. And maybe <laughs> that's a question I could address to the organizers again. How does such an extensive movement finance itself? It's one thing, you all know the classic <coughs> myth of Lysistrata, right? There was a woman's movement for peace in ancient Greece, and the women all said, you know, sex strike. hey, you know, right. this is going to be a strike. We're not going to have sex with you men if you don't, you know. As, stop as the war. women of Liberia did. Mm -hmm. Did they? Exactly. I forgot that. Yes, yeah. they did that, and they stopped the civil war of 13 years. Uh, one of the leaders was Leima Bowie, who was uh, won Nobel Peace Prize. And she's the one who speaks mm -hmm. in right. Prayer of the Mothers, uh, the woman, the African woman exactly. who speaks. Exactly, on the video. And marched with us and yeah, came to, to march with us. In... Terrific. Yes. That's the kind of personnel you should recruit to convince people because obviously they're more easily recruited or, you know, inspired or made contagious. 
affected by stars, you know, prominent people, yes. when there's some person supposedly speaking for others, you know, that's a powerful support. Mm -hmm. But back to my original question, how does the movement finance itself? Obviously, this kind of just organizationally, logistically requires a lot of funds. Where do you gather your funds? Is it just sponsorships? Is Are there big companies behind you? Are there only individual sponsors? Uh, we are also right now in the beginning. I mean, it's our uh, second action that we really take. So um, right now the Women March are sponsored uh, basically by us. If anyone feels free uh, to support us, please do. <laughs> you will get the Kanto number here from Eike Geppert. <laughs> no, you will announce it later <laughs> on and in German. <laughs> and, um, and um, yeah, we, uh, as, as I just said, uh, we are uh, a very young movement or the Initiative Puls des Friedens. We will uh, plan to do a three days peace event next year and you will hear from us. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sounds like a promise or a threat? A, a promise. <laughs> however you want to take it but but i think uh of course we were uh, asking ourselves so how we on earth are going to realize all this and we took the decision not to address to uh foundations and all that mm -hmm. because it's a lot of energy a lot of paperwork and honestly i don't like to do it and i like doing things what inspire me and uh i yeah i live my truth and People are welcome in our movement who are, uh, enjoy writing all this paperwork and, and they are really welcome to do that for us. But I don't like to do it. So we, we really do what, what, um, where our heart takes us to. And I like to add something what we were talking before about. I think what is in the way of peace is actually our, our intellectual mind because it holds mm -hmm. all belief systems what we grew up with in school or at home and the intellectual mind can't um, capture everything Just actually only a little frame of um, really uh, cognitive things but we are much more than the intellectual mind. The intellectual mind helps us not to run in front of a bus. And I'm grateful for that. But my core is not my intellectual mind. My core is my um, unending love for, for life, for all my brothers and sisters. That's my core. So I, I walk with this every day. And I use my intellectual mind for very practical things, to go shopping and all that. But for the rest, it, it's, it's more in the way. And, and to approach people, I think, mm -hmm. to help them to really feel their core, feel their nature, and um, to let go slowly of all this let's call it primitive emotion, like hate, anger, and because it's all about the survival uh, issues, mechanism, and and the, it has a reason why it's there, not to, to say, oh, how can you be so angry or, you know, peaceful, but rather to show people how can they feel again, beside mm -hmm. of the trauma, what happened, to feel their heart and to, ah, oh, oh, yeah, there there's something, I don't really get it now, but but, but it draws me and, and I like to explore more. This is, uh, and, and, uh, you ladies, you do it with the music. And there's so many ways how you can do it, mm -hmm. the arts, yes. and what what you inspire us. I think that's... Uh, I'm sorry. Miriam, you wanted to... I'm excited to hear those words that uh, are, for me, very true. And uh, I can say that, uh, for me, in my uh, point of view, it's become from love. It's something that we born with. And uh, it overcomes all the negative uh, feelings and all the hatred and all the anger also. Yeah. So spreading the love, it's something that it's in our um, um, intention, uh, body and soul. So. And I also think you always have a dis in every moment you can you can make a decision, and that has something to do with with consciousness, mm -hmm. being being aware of. Mm -hmm. Uh, you in every moment you can you can choose uh, do I go to the anger or do I go to the love yes. 
And um, I think that's what it is about, to to not say, because anger also can be a very good uh, motor. You know, when I'm angry, I can stand up. But I'm standing up not against somebody or against something. I'm standing up for it, for love, for my children, for the world and for the peace. Mm -hmm. It gives happiness. Right. You know, it's amazing that we never met till, till today, all of us. Mm -hmm. And it happened the same also when we went to Spain and when I went to Washington. What's amazing is that have this conversation, listen to these women speak and realizing that we have shared these thoughts without coordinating it. Yes. And that's what I'm talking about. No strategy needed. We are co coordinated naturally. Yes. That's on alignment. The same way. Yes. Alignment. That's yeah. contagious. Yes. <laughs> As you, that's a word you use. I think uh, the topic that you mentioned, that the big bad intellect is in the way of the two emotions. I'm a little skeptical. Maybe that's a typical male perspective. But I think emotions are the easiest to condition. Yeah. Any advertising specialist will know you appeal to emotions, not the intellect, because the intellect may refuse and see through something. I wouldn't be quite as convinced that the intellect is the guy to blame. But that's another broadcast altogether. No. We won't discuss that nowadays. But I remember a beautiful quote from your interview, Jarl. You said, uh, activism without music is like a ship without a wind. And that's probably very true. I remember music is a way to inspire revolutions, you added. Maybe you've heard of the famous American revolutionary and anarchist Emma Goldman. One of my favorite quotes that hung about my desk for a long time said, if you can't dance to it, it's not my revolution. Wise <laughs> <laughs> <And> nice woman. <laughs> That's what I thought too, wise woman. And maybe we can conclude the whole thing before we get an announcement of all the events that are going to take place tomorrow. Maybe you'll have a song, another song that you could grace us with to conclude this broadcast and discussion. The two of you, do you have another Nine. one besides the Mothers of Peace? Yeah. Well, I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord But you don't really care for music, do you? Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth The minor fall and the major lift The buffalo king composed it Hallelujah Hallelujah
שמעתי שדוד הנעים אקורד פלאים לאלוהים ושאתה שונא תבין ידוע אקורד עגום ומסתורי מינור נופל מז'ור Thank you. This was just a small aftertaste of the concert last night that you missed. But nevertheless, there are CDs that you can buy, of course, you're encouraged to buy, you can sponsor and whatever you can contribute to the Women's March for Peace, to the good cause, Mrs. Hoffman and Mrs. Cowell are going to announce to you now. Mrs. Hoffman? Yeah, dear people, um, I like to invite you um, to, to come to, to the march, where we meet at uh, five o'clock at the Neptune Brunnen am Alex, and we're gonna march together, sing together, have fun together to the Brandenburger Tor, where a really professional stage uh, is waiting for all of us and a great program. So we're gonna have, um, of course, you already know Yael and Miriam, they will sing and perform, and we will sing all together with them. Uh, also, there will be a, a great ceremony, and this ceremony is held by five women who um, will carry everybody to uh, a space in, in the center of the heart where we can feel the inner peace. And from that on, uh, a lot of surprises will happen. And, well, you will see, I hope so, <laughs> because you will come, right? And um, yeah, that's going to happen. And also we are collecting money to uh, support our further actions, action for peace. And you're most welcome to, to join our actions, to help organize and also to um, be part of the movement. And please put a little bit of money in our box. Thank you. For those that are new in Berlin, Alex is the Alexanderplatz, of course, and Brandenburger Tor is the Brandenburg Gate. For those of you that aren't familiar with the shorthand there yet, maybe we can say the same thing in German again. Frau Kaul, vielleicht nochmal die Ankündigung. Genau, hallo. Ich möchte euch alle, alle, alle einladen. Äh, morgen, also nein, heute, Entschuldigung, ich möchte euch alle, alle, alle einladen, heute Freitag, den 16.06. um 17 Uhr am Alexanderplatz, 17 Uhr, habe ich gerade schon gesagt, treffen wir uns. Ich hoffe, wir werden ganz, ganz viele, Jael und Miriam werden natürlich dabei sein und um 17.15 Uhr ungefähr laufen wir dann los zum Brandenburger Tor. Dort wartet eine Bühne von auf uns. Ähm, wir haben verschiedene Künstler eingeladen. Wir werden mit euch zusammen singen und ähm, ja, kommt, peace, joy and love. Danke an euch alle, danke an Jarl Deckelbaum, an Miriam Tukan, an Marit Hoffmann und Anja Paul. Sie hörten, ihr hörtet Women's March for Peace, der Friedensmarsch der Frauen. Es war eine Sendung von Radio Multikult FM aus der Marheinecke Markthalle in Berlin-Kreuzberg mit der Ermutigung, morgen an der guten Sache teilzunehmen. Am Mikrofon verabschiedet sich Eike Geppert. <lacht>